been 3D printing with the Creality K1 Max for about three months now. It boasts a 600 millimeter per second print speed, prints on an XY axis, and can use a majority of the filaments on the market. But does it actually deliver as advertised? Today I'm going to break down my experiences over the last three months with the K1 Max and let you know my thoughts on it from a beginner perspective and let you know if I think that you should buy it if you're considering getting into 3D printing. Before we go any further in this video, let me be fully transparent with you guys. I've only been 3D printing and using CAD software and slicers for about three months. Prior to getting this printer, about a, two days prior really, I tested a different printer and it wasn't gonna offer me the opportunity to make mistakes and learn as quickly because of just having slow print speeds and not being able to support what I needed to be able to do. So I quickly upgraded to the Creality K1 Max and I've been using it basically as a beginner ever since. Now, when I show you guys what I've been able to do with it, I think it'll speak to some of the skills that I've obtained and kind of validate the video a little bit. But at the same time, I want you guys to see as somebody who came into the hobby with no experience, what I've been able to do with this printer. I know most of you clicked on this video because of the thumbnail and I'll get there, just wait. Before I start talking about the performance of the K1 Max, let me first talk about unboxing and setup. So first off, setting this thing up is super easy. I'm, I really wish that I had filmed an unboxing and setup video, but I didn't know what I didn't know at the time and I definitely didn't know I was gonna be making a video on this. But ultimately, it just comes down to removing some packaging, putting on a door, putting on a little lid that's up top here, and removing three bolts. And you can see right here this threaded area. This is one of the three bolts you remove. There's one in each corner and in the front and one in the back. And basically those just hold the print bed in place during shipping. After removing the bolts, you just put the screen on. You can go over to the settings and basically go through all the calibrations, connect it to the network and set up anything you want to do with the camera and it's ready to print once you load filament in. There's a few options for movement and temperatures here and then of course your extrude and retract so once you load the filament and lock it in you can extrude it. When you're done using it you retract it to get the filament back out. Very very simple overall like I'm not going to go into too much detail of the setup because unfortunately I didn't film it like I said, so let's talk about performance. As I mentioned in the beginning, the Creality K1 and the K1 Max boasts a 600 millimeter per second print speed. Now, that's probably a speed that in ideal conditions with a larger nozzle and everything is achievable. For me, using the nozzles that came with it, which is a 0.4 millimeter nozzle, 270 to 300 has been about the max I've been able to achieve. That being said, 270 to 300 is pretty quick. To be honest with you, I don't think I've had a print last more than six hours to go with something really large. And most of my prints have been four hours or less. And the coolest thing about that is it's given me the opportunity to make mistakes and be able to correct them as I'm learning. So that's been a really cool option because it prints so quick that I can actually afford to the time to start over and do it again if I need to. Obviously a bit wasteful on the filament end, but that's the cost of learning. Now the main reason the K1 is so fast is that it utilizes a core XY system, basically meaning that instead of having a moving print bed that goes on the Z axis, it moves up and down and it allows the print head, which is already lighter, to just utilize belts and stepper motors and makes it a lot more efficient in printing. It also makes it capable of a lot higher detail. The print you're watching right now was a three hour and 15 minute print. In addition to an extremely effective printing system, the K1 also utilizes an auto leveling bed and AI cameras. Now, my experience with the AI cameras is so far it hasn't caught a print fail and it hasn't prevented spaghetti and hasn't really notified me of a clog. So I don't necessarily know that I can speak to the AI being all that great, but it does allow me to monitor my prints from my phone or from my computer and just make sure that they're going smoothly. I haven't had a whole lot of print fails. Most of them came from one roll of filament that was bad, but in the event that those things do happen, 
day I is supposed to catch it and it's not very effective. So don't necessarily rely on the AI to do that job for you. Now I want to talk about the quality of the prints and the printing materials. And I mainly use three different materials. So first off, I've got the Hyper Pet G Black. This is a bit of a stronger, more heat resistant material. I mo mostly got this to use with light boxes and things where heat was going to be a factor where I had to be concerned about it melting. So that's mainly what I've used that for. That prints at up to 600 millimeters per second, though, like I said, for me, I'm seeing about 300. Another filament that I like to use for more detailed projects where I'm going to slow the printer down anyways and I want it to have a really good quality is the silk filaments. So I've used quite a few different options with the silk, but they all pretty much print the same. This one, I really slow the printer down to somewhere between 40 and 60 millimeters per second because silk has to come out hotter and just requires a lot higher level of detail. But ultimately, when you're looking for something that's really going to pop, that's the filament that I go with. Of course, I've got the Creality Hyper PLA, which is the main thing that I've relied on. A lot of this exact color, the black, this is just like the fastest printing option. It works well. And I haven't had a whole lot of problems, but like I said, I did have one roll of black that just had a lot of imperfections and things like that. And then occasionally for a variety, for like a different color, I'll use a uh, flash forge. And I've found that that filament actually works really well as well. Then as far as print beds, there's also different options for print beds that you can use. So typically if I'm using something where I'm gonna have like a flat surface visible and it makes sense to do it, I like to use these textured plates. So I've got like a forged carbon fiber and then a regular carbon fiber texture. And this transfers pretty well overall. I'll show you guys some of the results in a minute. Then for anything else, I use a regular print bed yeah, this one's got a little bit of texture to it, not that it transfers over, but just makes it easier to remove. And then I've got the stock super smooth print bed as well. And basically it just depends on what I'm printing, which one I decide to use. Now here's an example of a print I've done using that textured bed. So you can kind of see how it transfers over. And it's not perfect. I have not fully got this figured out. You could see there's some under extrusion, Let's see if I can get it in the light. You can see it's not it's not a perfect print, but at a distance, it does look pretty good. And this is gonna be a sign, so there will be white light that glows through the back of it. Just one of the things I'm in the process of. And then when we talk about the detail of the print, I printed this Porsche logo at the fastest speed I possibly could just to see how it would come out and what the quality was going to be like. And just to give you guys a little reference, there's a standard pair of tweezers so you can see how small that print is and how detailed it is for as small as it is. So it is a very impressive printer capable of a very high quality print. Now, one more thing I want to talk about before I get into showing you guys what you came here to see. The K1 is now an outdated model. The K2 is the new printer. Now you have options with the K2 where it can print different colors and automatically switch filaments. And I think the K2 is definitely the way to go if you have the funds. But the K1 and the K1 Max are significantly cheaper right now. And if you're looking to get into 3D printing, I think they are an excellent option despite the fact that there's a newer model out there. If you're not looking to go crazy and spend $1,500 on a printer, you could definitely check out the K1 or the K1 Max. Now, that kind of sounded sponsored and I swear I'm not sponsored. I just wanted to share this with you guys because I wanted you to know there's options out there. What I should have said is I'm not sponsored yet. Hey, Creality. All right, guys, I said in the thumbnail that I 3D printed a car, kinda. For those of you that aren't familiar with the channel, this is a sim racing channel. So most of what I do, most of the videos I make revolve around sim racing. So let me show you guys what I meant when I said I 3D printed a car. 
This is my 3D printed sim rig. And pretty much every element of it, in one way, shape, or form, use 3D printing to make it as immersive as possible. We'll start with the center console, which takes design elements from the Porsche GT3 RS and basically is just kind of like a housing for my shifter and also provides storage in the center console. And then right next to that, you could see the 991 button box or my own version of a 991 button box, basically taken from the Porsche 991 cup car. And the full dash behind the steering wheel is inspired by the Porsche 992 cup car. So I used elements from three different cars to make this, but you can see the different levels of print that took place to make this look as immersive as possible. And if I zoom in to some of the parts, you can see how good the quality is overall. And here's a few examples of using Creality Silk to make the parts look a little more realistic. So the racing lap timer that you see in blue and the net quick release that you see in the red and silver are typically metal parts on a car and they're usually going to have more of like an anodized metal color to them. So the silk helps gives it, give it that sheen and make it look more metallic and realistic in the car. And these are the parts where I really wanted to have that quality show through. So I just thought I would share with you guys some examples of different materials used. Then above the rig, you'll see these light boxes, which I use for ambient lighting in the sim rig. They are reactive to what's happening on the screen. And if we go up towards the top, these are a good example of something you would want to use pet G on because as you can see here, I've got these LED lights and it gets very hot. So if I were to utilize PLA to make this lid, it would probably melt and deform. But because I use pet G, it holds its form very well and it makes for a good box. So as you guys saw, basically I got into 3D printing to build immersive sim rigs. Doesn't mean I haven't found other good uses for the printer and been able to print things for my house and other things that I needed. It's just not the main reason I got into it. For those of you looking to get into 3D printing for pretty much any reason, the K1 Max is an awesome large volume printer that I think works very well and is extremely detailed and I highly recommend it. For anybody just starting out, just based on how easy it is to use and how few fails I've had and how few issues I've had with printing as somebody who didn't know what they were doing at all three months ago. If you guys happen to be into sim racing and you're interested in any of the parts I've shared on the sim rig, I do share all my STL files to my base channel members. So all you gotta do is go sign up for the base membership and you have access to any files that I create each month. Additionally, if you guys are into sim racing, make sure you subscribe to the channel, ring that bell, and I'll see you guys on the next video.